I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit of a tomboy, but uh, this next topic really interests me. I think it's fascinating. They're, those spotted lantern flies, they seem to be popping up more and more, but what should we be doing about them? This afternoon, we have Amy Stone with the OSU Extension Office with us to tell us what we need to know about these pesky bugs. We're talking about the spotted lantern mm -hmm. fly, uh, Amy. So tell us, we've got we've got a couple little illustrations here. Why is this uh, such a problem? So they've been on the radar for a while. Okay. We've heard about mm -hmm. them, but populations are really growing, especially in certain areas of the county or the region. And so we just want to encourage people to continue to be on the lookout for them. And if we can start to manage them now at this time of the year before they're laying eggs or remove eggs that are being laid, then we're going to hopefully have, have a difference, make a difference about their impact next year and their populations. Okay, so tell me, I'm going to show off so people can see what we're talking about here while you tell me um, what makes them so harmful. Sure, and so, you know, for you or I, they're going to be a pest just because of their nuisance level. They're plant hoppers, so they feed on the sap of plants, and as they feed on the sugars of plants, it goes through their system and comes out the other end as something we refer to as honeydew, but it's a sticky, um, sappy kind mm -hmm. of substance. So everything where they're feeding becomes sticky, and then a black sooty mold comes in. And so it's just, um, you don't want to be outside in that. Oh. So they're a nuisance, but mm -hmm. they're also an agricultural pest. They like to feed on grapevines and hops mm -hmm. um, and on maple trees. So the maple trees that we want to tap for maple yeah, sugar. Yeah, so some important crops months, and, absolutely. and things that we consume. Um, you talked about trying to do something about this before they lay the eggs for next year. And we have, you know, what I just showed you is kind of a part of their life cycle, mm -hmm. I guess you'd call it. So I've seen these actually now in downtown Toledo. You said you just went and collected all these over at Levis Square here downtown. Mm -hmm. It was just a couple years ago. It was like we had never seen them. Right. And so each female can lay between th 30 and 50 eggs. And so if you do the math, that adds up pretty quickly. And so if we can control and manage the adults now and scrape egg masses if they've already been laid, that's going to reduce the population for next year. And the egg masses are is this one here. So it if is. you see that one. Right. Uh -huh. So she lays individual eggs um, and then she covers them up. I mm -hmm. kind of joke that she's a good mom, so she's protecting those eggs. So right here is what you want to be looking for, right? Yes. Okay, and you just want us to smash that? You can scrape them off into a container um, and Okay, and, and then these are, one. what is this? That, like, so those are the nymphs that uh -huh. those are going to hatch from the eggs next season. Okay, and then this one is what we're seeing kind of downtown. Correct. You just want us to stomp on those? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, I saw a lady doing that. She, she was going around crushing them. She must have gotten the message, which is a good thing. That means you're doing a good job. That's right. Um, what, is, what is the office doing about this? How widespread is this problem? I was just telling you, I have not seen these in the suburbs yet, mm -hmm. but you said it's coming. Yeah, so people are reporting, so we can kind of keep track of its movement. We're encouraging people when they visit areas that have high populations to check their vehicles so they're not mm. bringing them home or spreading them to different areas. Maybe people who camp or go to the lakes or mm -hmm. something like that. Absolutely. And if your numbers are really high and just smashing them, you kind of think, well, I just can't do it. There's too many. Some people will go to using like a vacuum and sucking mm -hmm. them up or an insecticide treatment to prevent them. Do you think that we're ever gonna to get to the point where this is something as common as a mayfly or a mosquito, or do you ever see a day where communities are gonna be spraying chemicals on these things in our neighborhoods, or are you guys still kind of researching this? So there's a lot of research to be done. Because they don't cause human health concerns, uh, there probably won't be a traditional spray program like we do for mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we'll see kind of a population peak and then it'll kind of balance off. So there are some birds and other insects that will feed on them. We just have to get through this really high peak of an infestation. Where did this come from? 
So they came from parts of Asia. They were in the egg mass stage that were laid on decorative stone that was imported into oh, the country. Wow. And about 10 years ago, they were found in Pennsylvania for the first time. Wow, and off they went. That's right. Isn't that how it works? Well, I hope you have, do you have some more information on your uh, website if people want we to do. check it out in more detail? Yep, it talks about um, special the trees that they feed on and how you can manage those and also the, the insect and what are some management options, including this trap that I have here. Ooh, show me how that works real yeah, quick. Yeah, so this is a funnel trap, and so you put it on your tree, and it takes advantage of how the insect climbs up and down uh -huh. the tree. It goes into the trap, and then we usually have a baggie on here uh. that they'll climb into. You take that off and remove it and replace it, and then you can do that throughout the season. All righty, and so you can visit the website there. Uh, was it agra.osu? So lucas.osu.edu. Okay. Or you can report any fines outside of the already known infested area to the Department of Agriculture. All right, Amy Stone, very interesting, educational, helpful. We hope we can uh, help you out here in Lucas County because you are going to start seeing those things Absolutely. over at Fifth Third Field downtown.